Hello and welcome to Don't Step on My Childhood, a new show which is kind of a, a sister thing to Daft Souls, which is the podcast we record on Cool Ghosts once every couple of weeks or so. It's a fantastic video game podcast and it now has a regular feature where we go back, we play something old and it's probably bad. Yeah, well, it's something old that I love from my childhood or something old that you love and then we just see if it's still good. Matt, what fabulous journey are we going on today? We are going on one hell of a journey. We are going to the fantasy star online i have never played a fantasy star game well what do i need to know it's i mean basically this is the best game that's ever been made i can see that but that also it's tr- possibly the worst game <laughs> that's ever been made as well i'm going to show you what characters you can be okay oh my god it's not gonna let me skip this we're gonna we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna oh my god <laughs> wait no no hang on i am interested this is a fan-made trailer is this on the disc the original game not this video exactly i'm struggling here on the one hand we've got interplanetary disaster and death on the other hand techno yeah the techno is not really um canon um (laughs) so what is blue burst blue burst basically is a fan-made version of fantasy star online what yeah like it's basically you played this when you were a kid no, I used to play Fantasy Star Online, which was on Dreamcast, and later I played it on the GameCube for hundreds of hours, like on my own. Blue Burst is a PC version, which has servers which are run by just people, and it, not wait, a lot of wait, people do it. Wait, isn't this illegal then? Are we doing a uh, cool crime I don't right know. now? Maybe, I don't know if it is or not. Fans usually can't just replicate a video game and add but to it. But they do more than replicate it. We're actually playing on the Affinia server which um, is one of the kind of better kept ones. Again, not a lot of people play on it, but they actually like are still tweaking the game and still improving it. Wait, still, like, what is happening stuff. with these pharmaceutical naming conventions? Well, this is why I'm here, um, to show you this. This so- is basically the character creation page where you can choose to be any of these things. <laughs> and look at the designs. Wait, the designs are a thing, but also, so Hunter means the first two letters of your name have uh, to be... Hugh. Hugh. Yep, but look at this. These are the magic casters who all dress like eccentric... Wow. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And then the Rangers, who have really cool shoulder pads. Sometimes they're robots. Okay. Uh, whoa. <laughs> so, yeah, you can obviously be, like, really short and really, really chunk or um, or really kind of tall and thin. This is like a human version of what people do when they breed dogs across thousands of years. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I need a name. Bollocks. Um, Call him Hugh Bollocks. Use the keyboard. Use the keyboard. Oh, I have to... Oh, what do you want me to type? Just... Something. Hugh something. Hugh Hugh something the humor. Right, so most importantly, this is the fantasy star. This is one of my favorite things about this game. Oh, there's a real fantasy star. It's well, not like no. Final Fantasy where there is no Final Fantasy. I mean, it's a joke, but you, whenever there's a loading screen, you get to wiggle around a little star a bit, and it gives you something to do. Oh. Oh, I didn't realize my hair was going to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So this is a screen that I is... haven't seen very frequently because oh. this is how you go online and do different servers and stuff. And I mostly played this game on alone. Alone, yeah. So I'm going to be playing that Faced game alone. Faced with the infinite possibilities of alone. one of the first online games ever, you chose to adventure with alone. You need to touch the keyboard Oh again. my god. Just bash anything in. It, it really doesn't matter. Oh no. my god. What people at home need to know is that every time Matt wants me to type anything, I have to untangle myself from, like... An anaconda of electrical equipment because it's Matt's house. This music, man. This music is the best music. I'm honestly, I hate everything about this, but the music is dope. I have walked up and down this space <laughs> corridor. How many times, guess? I have no idea. <laughs> but you do it so many times that you end up optimizing the exact route oh, of like how you do it. And I mean, I haven't played this for a long time. Out. You've got the shop in here where you can buy different types of things. Again. Oh, the music. Stop, stop, stop. Wait, stop. Listen to the music. Basically, this game means so much to me, it's almost impossible to explain. And yeah, it is basically a proto MMO, but you can only play in a party of up to four people. Running animation. I know, it's just insane. He hasn't pooped in three years. So I'm going to jump straight into Forest One, which is the first of the four levels in the game. There's not a lot to this game. Wait, there's four levels? Yeah. This is that Japanese thing of like. You know why? There are all kinds of reasons that a, a Western developer couldn't have made Monster Hunter, but one of them, and one of the bad ones, is that a Western developer would have put more than six levels in Monster Hunter. Yeah, well, I mean, each level has, like, three or four different, like, subzones. Wait, oh, God, hold missed. the phone. So you have 12 levels in yeah. this game. In yeah. an M- but, Oh, my God, but, Matt, you have chosen 
Forty. Oh man, I, I'm out of touch. I used to be able to play this perfectly, but I haven't played it for about a decade, so fair enough. So, I mean, what, what was the? Could, did you not have? <laughs> I love that you're like absolutely wordless. Did you it. not have other games? Is that what uh, is the reason? No, I mean, this the thing is, I, I played this for hundreds of hours with people on the Dreamcast, and I loved it so much. I then went and played it for hundreds of hours on my own, on. The GameCube. Okay, so I'm going to try and come to your level here. Was it the fact that this was one of the earliest games that tapped into that very human thing that's now in every game where mm -hmm. numbers go up? Is, was that what this game did for you? Yeah, I mean, this is basically like, it is actually a fascinating relic in the fact that it's an incredibly miserly Hang on, you're not, you're not moving to another area. I'm oh. not allowed to leave this room until I kill all the monsters. Wait, what do you mean all of them? They all die and then more come back? Yeah, no, it's waves, isn't it? Look. And there's some dogs now. This How do we know what wave you're on? Uh, you don't. You just they keep coming until you're done. Um, and that's how the game works. What if I were to tell you I'm done now? <laughs> no, 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 no. We are here for the f ride, my friend. But the thing I love about this game is it has an incredibly simplistic combat. Flow. Look at that lens flare. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Stunning. Um, it has a wicked music. Has incredibly simple like, very clunky combat. Like, once you start an attack, you are locked into it until the end of that animation. That is like Monster Hunter. And you have to... I mean, yeah, I mean, it does a huge disservice to Monster Hunter to to, to even suggest that, but you're right. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it does have a ton in common with Monster Hunter in the fact that basically it just expects you to enjoy the repetition and just doing it again and again and right. again. Right, but of course, the difference between this and Monster Hunter is Monster Hunter is an unbelievably complex uh, attack pattern for you yes. to learn. And, Absolutely. And Monster Hunter has tons to it. This doesn't. However, it's really, really compelling. So it's Stockholm Syndrome, isn't it, though? I mean, if you're going through an area over and over and over again, it could give you anything and that something would be really exciting. This is true. I could posit that the weapons that this game gives you surely are not as interesting as, like, some of the weapons in, say, action games. That... No, of course they're not. Like, it's 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 mostly aesthetic. Um, but then that's an interesting thing about this as well, is the fact that, like, there is a massive degree of aesthetic pleasure in it, and it's actually like quite ahead of its time in that way. Like you see the little thing on my shoulder. Yes, I That's was going to ask about her. Here. That is a mag. Now a mag is basically a little thing that you have that gives you stat boosts, and it's a little like creature, but you feed it. You literally feed it items that you have. Give it some monofluid. Ah, uh, you see, that's going to give him the wrong sort of stats. So do you remember the Chow from Sonic Adventure? It's kind of like exactly that. So you have to remember to feed it like a Tamagotchi, and then it levels up, and if wow. you want to get the ones that look really cool because they become f***ing awesome, then you have to like feed it certain things, and yeah, it's just, there's tons of things going on. But, I mean, it, it, are, are there though? Kind of hypnotizing. It is. And this is the thing, is already I'm just playing this again, and already I just love this game. And I think there's something interesting about it in the fact that it's so basic, there's so little to it. It's so miserly with you in terms of uh, how much it rewards you for the time and effort you put in. I feel like Stockholm Syndrome yeah, is, I love it. is one of those terms that's thrown around. People might not know necessarily exactly what it means. No. But when someone is holding you hostage, there is a established and known... Uh, occurrence where people fall in love with the people holding them hostage. This is definitely not uh, one of those circumstances. Obviously now all games are kind of like this in the fact that it's just like, hey, keep doing the same thing again and again and again and get different coloured things. But this was this was so compelling just to play. And obviously, because it was the first. No, 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 no. But that, that's the funny thing about this is it's not about, it's not all about the drops. Like, it's not all about just getting the loot and waiting for that drop and getting frustrated when you don't get it. Obviously, you have periods of that where you're like, oh, come on, I really want this thing and it's just not dropping. However, it's just the loop of just playing and killing stuff and, like, is just really satisfying, even though it's basic. And when I first saw this game, it wasn't like I played it and thought, this is kind of crap, and then got into it. First time I saw it, I was just amazingly enamored with it because I just the style of it was just amazing. It was... It was so evocative of a place um, that I just thought, man, I want to play that game. And then when I started, it's just like, it's just immediately fun and and um, is fun for a really long time. And I think it's fascinating that it's like, it's one of those weird games of a, a weird era where it is incredibly miserly, but it's not manipulative because <laughs> it's like obviously before the era of, of people then like turning these addictive little loops into more monetizable like things. There's nothing here keeping you here. Man, here's like, the thing. I'm not trying to be a dick. I mean, obviously, I'm sure that will come later in this series. But like, <laughs> I am really looking at this and, and want to take your side. And I I feel 
like it's a worrying reflection of like the way that politics is now, man. Like I'm looking at this <laughs> and going, oh, well, no, let's hear Matt out that this is a good game. And you're saying it. And I'm not processing like just any truth or facts to what you're saying. Like you're saying this is this is fun, but and I'm like, is it though? It's weird. I am having fun with this again. Like it's just bizarre that every time I load up this game, I always I know in my heart that it's kind of junk, but it is like my ultimate warm blanket. And I think it's interesting in the fact that there are so many games that have come and gone that are like this. And for so many years, I was waiting for another game like this and being like, oh come on, when are they going to make? When are they going to make a game which is going to like? But I mean, like, what's so what's the difference to your mind between this and something like Guild Wars Two? Guild Wars 2 isn't satisfying and that's the, that's the thing is like th there's something about this that I've never been able to put my finger on that other games use exactly the same systems yes it's nostalgia no it's not because I'm playing it now and I'm enjoying it just as yes, much yes because it's a my wife will go back and play games that she used to play as a kid purely because of she, she's completely aware that it puts her back in a place every sound every feeling every button she presses is the same thing it was when she was a kid that's what you're going through now uh, i don't know man like because i've played games well, okay, that i used to play the, as a give kid give me the pad give me the pad give me the pad well yeah but you don't know how to play so you're gonna find it frustrating well yeah but you can teach me can't you because good games are intuitive oh my god this camera okay we've got one you button. can't control the camera i mean you have to remember the era of the game you, you know? can't control right what's 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 guard or block uh you can't guard okay why, why was it just saying that sometimes these things miss okay. um yeah you don't. what yeah, I only had five health, so... Well, you could have told me that or used one of your huge I mean, it juices. I've run out, so there we are. All right, that doesn't count. I'm gonna... All right, wait. let's get you back in there. Let's get right, get back me in back there. in the... Get me, put, me, put me back in the fight, coach. All right, I've bought like 10 Healy things and I can't afford a telepipe now, so you can... A telepipe? Me. Telepipes, yeah. I mean, so I... there was a thing in this game, so basically this round here is the telepipe zone and the way it would work is basically <laughs> if you jumped in somebody else's game and they were in the middle of a mission, yes. then you could go and join them, but... To do that, you would have to go to this teleporter over here, go to the level, and then keep running through the empty level until you found them. Unless somebody put down a telepipe, and you say, TP please, and then they would pop a thing, and it would basically create a warp portal so you could go and join them. But sometimes when you were playing with strangers, you'd just be like, TP please, and they just wouldn't fucking drop it. And okay. Like, maybe they're in a boss fight, or maybe they're dicks. I mean, yes, that's not part of your reasoning for why this game is great that's just an anecdote right i mean it's a fascinating thing in the fact that one of the weirdest you, elements you, of this you game you cannot think that that is a good thing no no no. but one of the weirdest things about this game that hasn't actually been like hasn't been seen since really is the fact that there was so much of the mechanics of this game relied completely on trust in the fact that the loot was shared oh, in is the this, world is this the game where stuff drops on the floor and it's yes. who picks it up yes so like whenever you die like you talked about you this drop the weapon right, you're give, me the pad, give me the pad give me the okay. pad okay here we go here we right. go. A is a normal attack. So tell me what I should B, be doing. B, um, X is a heavy attack. Well, you need to, as soon as it locks on, you know you're going to lock on. Leveled up. You did level me up. Fair is, enough. Oh my God. Who's greater? Blue bursting. It's me. I'm bursting all over. And you see, the bear. trick here is, is to, to understand the flow. So you go hit, hit, hit. And then you know they're going to attack with an exact timing. So the idea is so that I run away. you hit them and then you step back. You see, there's a really weird knack to dodging stuff. There's a rhythm. Yeah, so there's no dodge button. It's just you have to not be there when they attack. Exactly. But oh, sometimes blocks. you guard. You have guard skill stats and you have um, evasion stats. Ooh, yeah, it's not easy, is you, it? To heal and you oh just press B. Oh, my God. Okay, I healed. Oh, wow. Here we it go. It isn't easy. It's very simple. But you made it look hard. easy. Not I know I did. Lie. You yeah. also made it look more fun than it is. <laughs> The funny thing about it is, is there's, again, a thing which not a lot of games of this ilk have done. There's no safety in terms of stopping you from doing things that are more difficult than you should. So you can actually go now to, like, the hardest level in the game, and you will That's just... Probably ace it, you will get hit, and you'll die in one hit. Yeah, would I, though? But if you're good enough... I mean, not at this point, but if you're good enough, you can actually, like, kill stuff. I killed everything in this area. You said I would be rubbish. I mean, yeah. It's... It's not as bad as it perhaps looks. It's, I'll, I'll go that far. This is the thing. is if For a game that is nothing, there is something weirdly satisfying just about the very simple rhythm of... And it's, in many ways, many ways it's, it's kind of like a rhythm action game. Especially when you're facing lots of things. It's just having a feel and remembering all three of the different... I can see the joy things. if you got some buddies and you and all your buddies are like different cast, like characters. Got to heal up. Nice, see? nice. Right, oh, it's, right. he's purple. It's a Giga Boomer. No, yeah, I mean, basically playing this for hours online with friends on, on the Dreamcast because obviously it's supported the keyboard as well, so you'd stay up all night chatting to people. I'll give the pad let back me get to, to the you, dragon. Let me get to the dragon. I think we're pretty close now. It's a yellow fella. 
These are rapids. Whoa. Oh, I was hoping that guy would fall when you had the controller. <laughs> just so you'd be like, what the fuck? Because this guy is like legit sort of dangerous. Go on then. Show me something good. I'm just trying to be careful about it. <laughs> this is the way you snake gently out of his hitbox. Yeah, well that's the thing. It's 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 very specific. <laughs> it's uh it's really hard to describe, but yeah, it's just Having played it tons, you just you just know how to do it, and it's you would have got hit there if it weren't for. Yeah, there. I see, it's nasty. Oh, it's the fucking ball bag. It's the it's the dragon. Are we here? No, close, really close. What is that sound? It sounds like someone got their foot stuck in a door, or, <laughs> or, or trapped their arm behind a radiator, or something. It's the ball bag. It's the mosquitoes. Yeah, it's the mosquito ball bags. The thing about the way you used to play this game, though, is it's funny. You would have like one character, and you go up to like level 100. I think get up to level 200. But you would. I was uh, I was busy uh, kissing ladies. Fair enough. Fair enough. I wasn't. Kissing I ladies. think like I've probably got better memories of playing this game than, than <laughs> kissing most of the ladies I've kissed, and that's it's usually in it. Can the next Please Don't Stop My Childhood just be like me talking about dates, <laughs> <laughs> like really bad dates I went on? Oh God, no. That's just I don't want to. That's just painful. My mum once came with me on a date. And then that wasn't even the worst bit. Like, obviously, it was disastrous. But then at school the next day, people were going, I heard something about you. But it can't be true. I heard your mum went on a date. Why so I went, would that? <laughs> of course, of course, it's not true. It's not true. Um, That's just. I was a bad day at school. You know, like the way we feel about, like, Morris dancing, about this being, like, really arcane, like, almost collective insanity of why would anyone do that? I think older generations are going to look at us playing MMOs, like, these really basic. 3D environments where we'd run an orc around and level up. Do you think they'll be like, what were people doing? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. This is an exciting thing. This is the boss thing, which often you go, oh, yes, fine. Oh, God, I forgot. I'm in a dragon fight. It's an actual dragon. I thought it would be like a space dragon. No, it's a dragon. Matt Lees, you can do this. It's the finale of the very first Please Don't Sever My Childhood. I'm not going to be able to do it. Matt, I believe in you. I'm going to get killed. You're and not. And it's not, quite, it's not quite the finale. I'm going to show you something briefly after this anyway, but this dragon is just like it's not terribly hard but again so kill it usually the people at home want to show you want to be like mm, it's gonna be hard i'll give it a go, go i feel i'm a bit rusty i believe in you listen to this music let the music buoy your soul up into the roof of this cavern i've only got two healing things mate mate i don't want to hear it all i need is, is the is again? the wom 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 of my sword mate wom 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 it's just, i love it wom 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 I'm not actually. Wom, wom, wom. Mate, I take it all back. I can see why you played this game for six years. It's the Wom game. <laughs> I'm delighting in imagining the Japanese composer who came into work in his studio with all the soundproofing, sat at his like 1995 keyboard or whatever. And it's like, today I'm going to compose a guitar tune for fighting a dragon. So good. Oh, God. Oh. oh, what the hell was that? That's the dragon going underground and running into you. How do you avoid that? Uh, you have to use the mini map and basically look at the exact angle it's coming out from you and adjust to be exactly 90 degrees of it. It's honestly, this weird. Like, I'm making this look like there's nothing going on, but there are so many tiny things. Yeah, it's funny. How could you possibly make a game <laughs> as nuanced and complex as this look like there was nothing going on? It just, it's it's uh, testament to your skill. You're, you're taking the piss, but there is, like, so much. You, you, even when I was fighting stuff earlier, if you saw what was actually going on my hands, there's, like, tons of little micro-touches of the control. Not now, obviously, because I'm not doing the camera stuff, but so much of the camera manipulation is just really vital. They couldn't be more clear. See, but, you see what he did there? Did you see that? You see that son of a <laughs> And now this is me, what I was talking about earlier, having to go and actually, come on, come on, come on, come on. Is one of the items in your inventory uh, called hand fluid? Oh, I thought I had a, oh, I thought I had a try, mate, but I don't. That was me running onto lava because I was trying to find the healing item in my inventory. Well, not let's not dwell going. on your immense failure. <laughs> let's go to uh, whatever's coming next. What else? What's the last thing you're going to show me? So finally, yeah, this ship. I, I like have... the city. I would love a game of just running around the city. Well, that's the thing as well. Like, oh, gosh. I still enjoy the loops of this game. I still enjoy playing it and just trying to kill stuff and just trying to trying to see how far I can get. My, my biggest record is getting to the end of the third zone mines and, and being like in one run. Uh, which was without having like any level resets, and that was pretty impressive. That's crazy. Um, it is. You you have no idea, but it is. Um, but really, when I was playing it online on the Dreamcast, you would spend hours just standing around here with your keyboards, chatting to each other about the stuff you found, and you had these little, like cool emoji things and fixed greetings you could do. So it was all also translated, so you could be play with people in Japan or France and say, "Everybody, 
Shall we go to the medical room, everybody? <laughs> Wait, what determines who comes into your hub world? Well, you could open them to uh, anyone. You can only have four people in here, but you could make it private so any friends could come, or you could just open it and have random strangers coming in and out. And there was advantage to playing with strangers sometimes or different people because you can see that little blue badge there. Yeah. That determines what loot you get from your game. So you have like different drop rates for things, which means you can play in your own game for like hundreds of hours, but then you can go in somebody else's game who has one of the other 12 colored symbols and you'll just start finding different stuff and getting rares that you just are really unlikely to find in your game, in your world. Huh. But this, okay. Yeah. This was the level I first saw. So my friend brought his well, Dreamcast. The music's even got really like... This is the mind. Gentle and ambient. And like a Fortet song. It's basically an, a robot mine. I feel like I'm walking into your past. And my friend brought it round to my house and I just watched him playing it and I just thought, this game is fucking... This is the nuts. This is... An amazing contrast between the music that's playing and the action on screen. Oh, that's me, Dan. That is pretty much Fantasy Star Online. It's, it's still got something. It's weird. I still play it, and I'm like, this is still just really satisfying and just tickles me in a way that so many more modern, more apparently accomplished loot grindy action games just don't. And I think I'm not alone in that. In the fact that you still got these people maintaining these servers and. Still have people at me who go in and play Blue Burst every now and then and give up after about, like, you know, 20 hours again. But it's just, it's still good somehow. So has Matt lost his mind? Why don't you leave a comment deciding like, whether you agree with Matthew that this game has something like, what is, Dimenians? This is ruins. This is the fourth area. This it, is this is where you die. This is ruins. Whoa, it's kind of I'm like not dead. The ruins of your childhood. Leave a comment. Is Matt right? Am I right? And then look forward to Matt bullying the hell out of me in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, you're going to play a bad game and I'm going to be like, this game is junk. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. If you've enjoyed this video, this is only the kind of baby sister of a big, beautiful podcast where Matt and I talk uh, about all kinds of cool video game stuff we've been playing, cool observations. It's a good time, and it's called Daft Souls. Yep, you can check it out on iTunes. We'll have a link in the description. Do check it out. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Bye.